After decades of relative quiet, scientists have uncovered a startling revelation deep beneath Mount St. Helens, one that could challenge long-held assumptions about the volcano's past and raise urgent questions about its future. What researchers have found embedded in the rugged terrain is reshaping the narrative of the 1980 eruption and may hold clues to ongoing subterranean activity. Newly identified geological formations and signs of unexpected unrest beneath the surface suggest that this mountain still has secrets left to reveal, potentially altering how experts view one of the most catastrophic volcanic events in American history. Towering at 8,363 feet in the Cascade Range of Washington State, Mount St. Helens is among the most iconic and volatile volcanoes in North America. Its breathtaking appearance masks a complex and often dangerous inner world, defined by centuries of volcanic upheaval. The mountain story is not only one of awe-inspiring beauty, but also of raw geological force. With the 1980 eruption marking a pivotal moment in the scientific understanding of volcanic behavior. Prior to that catastrophic event, Mount St. Helens had remained relatively subdued, with only sporadic activity reported during the 1800s. But in early 1980, a sudden burst of seismic events and steam-driven explosions hinted that the mountain was reawakening. As March unfolded, a noticeable bulge began to grow on the volcano's northern flank, a visible manifestation of pressurized magma rising beneath the surface. This ominous deformation signaled that a major eruption was likely imminent. Then, on May 18, 1980, a magnitude 5.1 earthquake set off a deadly chain reaction. A massive landslide followed by a lateral blast of extraordinary power. The explosion obliterated everything in its path, sending ash miles into the sky and blanketing much of the Pacific Northwest. The blast not only scarred the landscape, but also redefined the limits of scientific forecasting and the destructive potential of stratovolcanoes. Mount St. Helens continues to pulse with activity. Earthquakes and minor eruptions still occur, underscoring the mountain's status as an active volcanic system. Today, the area is protected as a national volcanic monument and serves as a living laboratory, offering invaluable insights into volcanic processes and ecological regeneration after catastrophic disturbances. But the looming question remains. Could another major eruption be on the horizon? In the wake of the 1980 cataclysm, the region surrounding the volcano appeared lifeless, a gray expanse of ash and ruin. The devastation posed a pressing question for scientists and ecologists alike. Could life return to such a barren, hostile environment? Surprisingly, the answer began to take shape beneath the surface, thanks to an unlikely group of pioneers, pocket gophers. These small, burrowing mammals, native to the area, emerged as unexpected agents of recovery. By tunneling through the ash and soil, they began to aerate the land, mix nutrients, and create microhabitats for seeds to take root. Supported by ecologists and wildlife specialists, the role of these resilient animals was soon recognized as pivotal in initiating the early stages of ecological succession. Their quiet but persistent efforts helped re-establish a foothold for plant and animal life, proving that even in the wake of devastation, recovery can come from the most unassuming sources. In the aftermath of environmental upheaval, ecologists had long recognized the quiet but profound influence of pocket gophers in disturbed ecosystems. These unassuming creatures contribute to the regeneration of damaged landscapes by aerating the soil, enhancing its fertility, and encouraging the growth of new vegetation. With this knowledge in mind, scientists turned to the devastated terrain of Mount St. Helens, where they considered whether these animals could serve as unlikely agents of renewal. 
Following a meticulously planned and closely supervised initiative, a small group of native pocket gophers was introduced into the blast zone. Transported by helicopter and released at carefully selected locations, these animals embarked on a mission rooted in instinct. Upon arrival, the gophers immediately began their work. Their natural behaviors, digging, tunneling, and displacing earth had an astonishing effect on the ashen wasteland. As they burrowed through compacted volcanic debris, nutrient-rich soil was brought to the surface, while oxygen and moisture seeped deeper into the ground. Once sterile patches began to show signs of transformation, becoming more welcoming environments where seeds could germinate and take hold. Their tunneling activities did more than stir the soil. They crafted microhabitats that retained moisture and nurtured microbial life. These small pockets became sanctuaries for insects, fungi, and other organisms essential to the soil's ecological balance. Seeds carried by the wind or dropped by passing wildlife found ideal conditions to sprout, leading to the slow but steady return of plant life. Hardy grasses, resilient shrubs, and pioneering plants began to take root in areas influenced by gopher activity. As vegetation reclaimed the landscape, the gophers' impact rippled outward. Their burrows and the growing plant cover attracted insects, birds, and small mammals, initiating the return of a functioning food web. This resurgence of biodiversity set the stage for larger herbivores and their predators to follow. What began as a small ecological experiment evolved into a self-sustaining network of life, anchored by the efforts of an overlooked species. In time, the initial population of gophers expanded, and their presence became visibly etched across the volcanic plains. Vegetation flourished in scattered patches, gradually knitting the barren terrain into a living tapestry. The soil stabilized, Erosion slowed, and wildlife returned in greater numbers, creating a vibrant and resilient ecosystem. Scientists observing this transformation noted not only the physical recovery of the land, but also its restored ecological integrity. This outcome offered more than a success story. It challenged assumptions within the field of ecological restoration. The Mount St. Helens project illustrated that small native animals, when reintroduced into their natural role, could act as keystone species, shaping their environment in ways that support entire communities of life. Rather than relying solely on engineered solutions, the intervention demonstrated the value of working with nature, allowing inherent biological processes to guide recovery. Inspired by this approach, Ecologists around the world have begun exploring how other burrowing species, such as prairie dogs and ants, might assist in restoring habitats ravaged by wildfires, flooding, or human disruption. The story of Mount St. Helens and its gopher pioneers serves as a powerful reminder that even the smallest creatures can play a monumental role in the healing of a landscape. The United States Geological Survey, USGS, has identified a series of geophysical changes at Mount St. Helens that point to renewed volcanic activity. Among the most telling signs is a notable uptick in earthquake swarms, clusters of small, shallow tremors, typically below magnitude 2.0. These micro-earthquakes, though minor, carry deep implications. They are usually caused by the movement of magma, or volcanic fluids beneath the Earth's surface. As pressure builds, it fractures the surrounding rock, producing these subtle quakes. Their increasing frequency suggests that magma is slowly ascending from the depths toward the volcano's subterranean chamber. Ground deformation provides another compelling clue. When magma accumulates beneath the surface, it pushes against the overlying layers of rock, causing them to shift rising, tilting, or warping in response. This deformation is tracked through high-precision GPS stations and satellite-based INSAR technology, capable of detecting minute changes in elevation. 
While some surface movement is expected in any active volcanic system, consistent or accelerating deformation may signal that the magma chamber is gradually refilling, increasing the likelihood of future eruptive activity. Accompanying these signs is the release of volcanic gases, specifically sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. As magma rises, the pressure drops, allowing gases dissolved within it to escape through surface vents and fractures. Scientists analyze these emissions to gauge magma depth, pressure conditions, and potential changes in the volcano's behavior. A spike in gas output, or a shift in the chemical composition of the emissions, can be a powerful indicator of intensified subterranean activity. This entire process is part of a broader volcanic cycle often referred to as recharging. Over long periods, magma from deeper sources, driven by tectonic forces, such as the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate beneath the North American plate, rises toward Mount St. Helens's magma chamber. This accumulation is typically gradual, occurring over years or decades. If the chamber continues to fill without periodic release, internal pressure can eventually reach a threshold that leads to eruption. However, this is not an immediate or guaranteed outcome. Historically, the volcano has undergone similar cycles of recharging without erupting, underscoring the complexity of volcanic forecasting. To track these developments, the USGS maintains a constant watch using a sophisticated array of seismometers, GPS monitors, and gas detectors. These tools enable scientists to identify shifts in the volcano's behavior in real time and to provide early warnings if conditions escalate. At present, while the data confirms magma is accumulating, the USGS has not raised the alert level. This indicates that an eruption is not believed to be imminent, though vigilance remains high. Even as Mount St. Helens displays unmistakable signs of internal stirring, this does not point to an immediate or large-scale eruption. Many volcanoes remain in a state of slow recharge for decades without erupting. Still, the combined evidence of seismicity, ground deformation, and gas emissions is a reminder of the volcano's restless nature. Should this activity intensify, it could mark the beginning of a new eruptive phase. But the timing, scale, and style of any future eruption remain uncertain, governed by forces that science continues to study but cannot yet fully predict. If Mount St. Helens were to erupt again, the consequences could be far-reaching, shaped by the volume of magma beneath the surface, the pressure inside the magma chamber, and a variety of geophysical conditions Scientific evidence and historical behavior suggest a range of possible outcomes, each carrying its own risks and disruptions. This volcano has a well-documented history of powerful, explosive eruptions, most famously the 1980 event, which unfolded with little warning and unleashed devastating pyroclastic flows and a towering ash plume. A similar scenario could repeat if magma and gases accumulate rapidly enough to generate intense internal pressure. Such an eruption would likely produce a towering column of ash, fast-moving pyroclastic flows, and widespread devastation around the blast zone. However, not all eruptions follow this violent pattern. From 2004 to 2008, Mount St. Helens displayed a more subdued form of activity, with lava quietly extruding to form a dome inside the crater. This kind of effusive eruption, while less destructive in the short term, can still pose serious threats, particularly to researchers and hikers in the vicinity, and can alter local ecosystems and air traffic routes for extended periods. One of the most immediate hazards of a major eruption would be the ash plumes, which can rise miles into the atmosphere. In 1980, ash spread across multiple states, and a similar event today could severely disrupt commercial aviation. Volcanic ash can clog jet engines and damage sensitive aircraft systems, 
forcing the rerouting or grounding of flights across the Pacific Northwest and potentially beyond, depending on wind patterns. Pyroclastic flows remain among the most lethal threats. These searing avalanches of gas, ash, and rock can descend the slopes of the volcano at speeds exceeding 300 miles per hour, 480 kilometers per hour, obliterating nearly everything in their path. If a blast like the 1980 eruption occurred today, it could imperil communities within a 10-mile radius. Fortunately, much of the surrounding area is now protected, reducing the number of people exposed to direct danger, though the natural threat remains. Longer-term dome-building activity would involve the gradual emergence of thick, viscous lava, which cools and hardens to form a mound within the crater. These eruptions can continue for months or even years, slowly reshaping the volcanic landscape. Although less violent, they still carry risks, especially for those studying or exploring the area, as unstable rock formations and gas emissions can create hazardous conditions. Mount St. Helens is also highly susceptible to lahars, powerful volcanic mudflows formed when water, often from melted snow or rain, mixes with loose volcanic material. These flows can surge down valleys with little warning, destroying bridges, roads, and anything else in their path. In 1980, lahars traveled over 50 miles, inflicting damage on communities and infrastructure downstream. A similar event in the future could threaten river systems and populated areas far from the crater. Ashfall, even from a moderate eruption, can significantly affect nearby towns and cities. A thick layer of ash can collapse roofs, clog machinery, and cover crops. Transportation becomes difficult, and water supplies can be contaminated by ash-laden runoff, endangering aquatic life and public health. People in affected zones would need to guard against inhalation hazards and prepare for disruptions to utilities and communication networks, as ash can block air filters and interfere with power systems. If Mount St. Helens began to exhibit unmistakable signs of an impending eruption, emergency measures would quickly follow. Authorities would likely initiate evacuation protocols and shut down key roads to safeguard the public. Local emergency services, working closely with the United States Geological Survey, USGS, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, would implement pre-established contingency plans developed from past volcanic events. At the same time, public outreach campaigns would aim to inform residents about the risks of ashfall and lahars, guiding them on protective actions and the safest evacuation routes. An eruption would ripple across multiple sectors, especially agriculture, tourism, and infrastructure. Volcanic ash could smother crops, degrade soil, and damage livestock pastures, dealing a severe blow to local farms and the broader food supply chain. Tourist activity would likely decline dramatically as visitors avoid the hazard zone, delivering a blow to businesses that depend on seasonal traffic. Municipalities and state governments would shoulder the financial burden of cleanup operations, emergency services, and the repair of damaged roads, utilities, and public buildings. If you found this exploration fascinating, don't forget to give the video a like, share it with others who are curious about the natural world, and subscribe to the channel for more science content that dives deep into the Earth's most powerful phenomena. Got a topic you'd love to see covered next? Drop it in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, stay curious and stay safe.